Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. Today, we're going to talk about testosterone and alcohol. Does drinking alcohol negatively impact your ability to produce natural testosterone? If you're on testosterone replacement therapy, does drinking alcohol negatively impact your ability to get dialed in? Now, obviously, the answer is yes on both counts. How disappointing. So why do we drink alcohol? Well, it calms us down. It allows us to enjoy certain situations, to cope with stresses, to forget our woes. There are numerous reasons why we drink alcohol. It's so deeply ingrained in society. Celebrate, commiserate with booze. But what are we doing? Well, we're poisoning ourselves because it's a central nervous system depressant. What's going on then? Well, we're suppressing glutamate. This is one of your primary excitatory neurotransmitters. This is keeping you alert, sensing danger. And what are we supposed to be doing? Surviving. So you want this excitatory neurotransmitter to fire. But as I've said before, we're physical beings in a world full of psychological stress. And that psychological stress causes too much stress, too much glutamate. So what else is going on? Well, you're getting an increase in GABA, and this is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So again, you feel great drinking alcohol. Your inhibitions are lower. The stresses and strains of the modern world don't seem so real. But you have to pay the piper. What else is going on? Because it's not just that, is it? There's a whole list of things. You've got corticotropin releasing factor. This allows you to react appropriately to stresses. So if this is decreased, you get a sympathetic overload. So you've got your sympathetic system and you've got your catabolic hormones. The neurotransmitters are acute. The hormones are more chronic. And what's it all about? It's about balance, baby. So you always have to pay the piper. So if you've got depressed consciousness for four hours as a result of intoxicating yourself with alcohol, you've got days of increased anxiety as a result. Where have you been? What have you been doing? I don't like this. What has happened? So when you're young and dumb with no responsibilities, seems all right, doesn't it? When you're older, for you can risk everything so the psychological effects of alcohol are quite profound and we've got an awful relationship with alcohol because again dopamine serotonin the list goes on now we know the physical effects of alcohol so we think about cancers we think about cardiovascular disease we think about liver dysregulation so what's going on here? Now, this is a particular importance when it comes to, obviously, testosterone replacement therapy, because where is the aromatase enzyme that converts testosterone to estradiol? Well, it's in numerous places, but one of those places is the liver. Now, if you get overexpression of the aromatase enzyme as a result of alcohol, you're going to get an increase in estradiol compared to testosterone. And that's going to negatively feed back to the hypothalamus and pituitary to trick the brain into thinking you have enough testosterone. So you send le less LH and FSH down to the testicles to produce testosterone and sperm. That's not a good thing, is it? So why drink alcohol? Well, because again, it's fun, isn't it? How disappointing. But it's eyes wide open. You have to pay the piper. Alcohol dysregulates sleep. It messes around with sleep latency. You get decreased REM sleep. And when do your anabolic processes predominate? Yeah, you guessed it at night time. So you get sleep dysregulation. If I drink alcohol, the rise in estradiol also causes a rise in histamine. And I get quite puffy. And that's as a direct result of estradiol increasing histamine. God, oh, isn't it disappointing? But it is what it is. 
eyes wide open all the time. Drinking alcohol causes harm. They're empty calories. They have no benefit whatsoever. And what we see is an increase in visceral fat. And as we've said before, we need visceral fat, but we don't need too much. If you get too much visceral fat, you're becoming a chunky monkey. And we're going to get problems with metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes, which are pro-inflammatory states. Calories in, calories out. It's bad news. So leptin, you get leptin resistance. And again, your appetite is high. You make bad food choices when you drink alcohol. Order that pizza, have that curry, have that kebab. So you don't feel good in the morning. And what do you do? You're not the person that you should be. And again, we talk about hormones, the day, night, day, night, day, night part. Every day is a new opportunity. So if you drink alcohol, you're negatively impacting the next day. And if testosterone replacement therapy is anything, it's a second chance. It's a chance to be the person that you should have been. Now, it's likely that obviously you've done lots of things to be sat here in front of this screen listening to me harp on about testosterone. Now, we don't live according to physiology. We don't pay sufficient attention to addressing stress, to resolving stress, to look into healthy ways of coping with stress. Ice baths, meditation, nature, all the things I bang on about all the time. We don't pay enough attention to sleep. I would say sleep is perhaps the most important part of these three things, lifestyle, nutrition and exercise. Your anabolic process is predominant at night time. You're recovering from the day to prepare for the next day. So if your sleep's dysregulated as a result of alcohol, you're not going to recover, even if you're on testosterone replacement therapy. I'm dialed in, obviously. And if I drink alcohol, I don't sleep very well. How do I feel the next day? Rubbish. I don't like feeling rubbish. Why am I doing it? It is imbecilic. As I said, you make bad food choices. That alcohol that's increasing visceral fat is also messing around with your ability to produce and metabolize carbohydrates, fatty acids. So what are we doing? It's utterly absurd. So Lydia and I did dry Christmas. It's over now and I'm a little bit disappointed it's over. So I'm going to restart because I felt amazing. Why did we do it? Because everybody goes to excess. Oh, it's, it's an excuse. Christmas. I can drink. I can be merry. I don't need alcohol to be merry. I had a great Christmas. But do you know what I was? I was considered and I reacted appropriately to all situations. Some things that would have wound me up and I would have reacted to and we've had a big Barney didn't happen. I was considered and we say about hormones, there's a chronicity to hormones. And if we ingest a medication or a drug that has an acute effect and it's a deleterious acute effect, then more fool us. So yeah, dry Christmas. No arguments with my sister. Result. <laughs> I think testosterone replacement therapy, as we said before, is a catalyst for change. It's not an excuse to go back to your bad negative behaviours that got you there in the first place with testosterone deficiency. I think you need to treat this as an opportunity to be a better version of yourself. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm some virtuous, self-righteous ass because I'm not. I do silly things, but I'm trying to be a better version of myself. I'm trying not to make as many silly choices as I have done in the past because obviously they have caused harm. Do you think if I... Yes, it did cause harm. It's a fact. Do you think... Yeah. So, what I want you to do is what? 
look after yourselves. Get educated on what your body needs, not what you think you want. And then when you see the benefits of having what you need, you'll want what you need. Quite simple, guys. Time to go run the dogs. Have a great day and earn your reward.